Hi guys, Jane here, and today I'm talking to you about The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. Um, and I read that as an ebook on my Kindle. It is a story about a man who is an orthopedic surgeon, and he is called in to do a consult on this child who has been found um, very badly abused. And this child I mean, it's emaciated, has not been fed recently, to the point that they think she's many years younger than she is at first glance. Um, they also know that she has been tied up. They find where she came from and her mother had been murdered. So they're trying to kind of find out what's going on, if her life is in danger, if she has other family, you know, who murdered her mom, you know, who had her in captivity, you know, what was happening. So anyway, the orthopedic doctor gets really close with this little girl, and as they don't find answers, he decides that he's going to adopt her, him and his wife. They take her in, and obviously after years of abuse, she's got some mental health issues. And as the story progresses, the couple finds that dealing with her mental health issues start to tear them apart. So my overall rating for this book was a 4 out of 5. And I'm going to do a non-spoiler section first because this is a thriller and a mystery. And then I'm going to get into a spoiler section where I'm going to go into more detail about some of the things that didn't work for me. And, and honestly, also some of the things that did. The first thing I really loved about it is there was great rep of um, mental illness in a child. And the parents caring for a child who has mental illness. So um, as some of you know, if you follow my channel, I have a daughter who has oppositional defiance disorder. So I am in support groups for other parents who have children with the same condition. This is not the condition the girl in the book has. However, there are a lot of similarities and I definitely saw things that we had seen on a much smaller scale with my own daughter. And so that was really cool to see that represented in a book because I think people don't always understand when kids have mental illness. In the book they say that the little girl has reactive attachment disorder, although because of some stuff later in the book, I'm not sure if that diagnosis holds, but it was really cool to see the parents struggling and we have obviously struggled quite a bit with my daughter's illness, not like they did, but, um, but it was good to see the representation and there are other families who have children with the same diagnosis as our daughter has who are closer to where the people were in this book. So like, it is absolutely real, it absolutely can happen, and it is a very um, difficult situation, but one that I don't think gets really enough attention in the media, and I thought it was well handled. I loved the frustration the parents were going through as they're trying to help this little girl, and you know, you think you've got something, you think you are doing something that works, and then it doesn't work. And you know, that is just part of raising a child with mental health problems. So I loved that part of the book. I also really loved the character development, um, a particularly of the mother. Um, and sorry about all the throat clearing. I am recovering from an upper respiratory infection that was turning or turned into pneumonia. I think I'm better now, but there's still a little gunk in my throat and my lungs. I, I really thought the mother particularly developed well over the course of the story, and I really liked and understood her. The dad in the story was a well-meaning guy who I kind of, on one hand, wanted to applaud, and then at other times, I really wanted to shake him for not seeing some of the things that were going on. I do love kind of one of the twists at the end that I'm going to talk about in the spoiler section. I didn't, uh, there were like a couple main twists. One I totally saw coming. It was no shock to me. The other one was, and I thought it was something that is really big and important and hopefully opens a lot of minds to discussion, but that um, I hadn't seen coming and, and I was really happy to see. And I'm going to talk about that in detail in the spoiler section. I don't want to do that too much here, but it was something I was really excited about. 
one of the things in the book that wasn't exactly good, wasn't exactly bad, I kind of was neutral about it, but I feel like it's important to mention here, is that the book doesn't really tie up super, super neatly. There are some things very much left hanging, like some decisions the characters need to make at the end of the book that they just aren't at a place to make, um, or, you know, we don't ever find out what ultimately happens. So that was it. It was good, and I kind of understood why the writer did that, because there wasn't a good way for them to solve the problem. But at the same time, if you're one of those who really hates loose ends, this may not be the book for you. I did have one real big negative about the book, and this may seem picky, but I felt like one element of the police investigation of, you know, where the girl had come from and her mother and stuff, I don't know how realistic it was. Maybe it was an absolutely realistic portrayal, but I just, I felt like it wasn't, because I'm a big fan of things like Law and Order, I had a hard time buying this, and maybe that's because this is more realistic. But basically, without trying, without giving too much away, there were certain things in the in the in the crime scene where the mother had been murdered and where the girl had been being held captive that could have told the investigators a lot more quickly what was going on, who was responsible for the mother's murder, you know, who had chained up this poor little child and starved her and all this stuff. But the police said that they hadn't investigated it because of problems with the, getting a search warrant. And again, I've watched Law & Order and I thought that generally you can get a search warrant pretty easy for the stuff that is like at a murder scene. Like i would never heard of it being hard to get a warrant for stuff at a murder scene. Like it's a murder scene. So that was the only thing that really kind of bothered me. And again, it might be that this is more a more realistic portrayal, is the detectives are like, yes, darn, it took us so long to figure all this out because we couldn't investigate this and that. And it's like, it was at a murder scene. I feel like you can go to a judge and say, hey, there's this stuff at the murder scene that we need. And the judge is going to say, hey, that seems like it makes good sense. So again, maybe it's because I watched too much Law and & Order and that's more unrealistic, but I did think that police investigation into what had happened to the girl and what had happened to her mom was not very, was at the very least maybe realistic, but not good fiction. And I would hope that it is not that hard for our cops and investigators to explore a crime scene, like a murder and child abuse investigation scene, and that they don't have to jump through massive hoops to get a warrant for that search of that scene and things at that scene. And again, that's kind of all I can say without going into too much detail. It's a mystery, it's a thriller. Ultimately, again, because it's those things, you know we figure out what happens, but it takes a really long time because of this issue with, you know, the stuff at the crime scene we couldn't fully investigate because of warrants. So that was my big negative for the book. Um, otherwise, I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move into the spoiler section now. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the book, I am going to talk about things, including the twist at the end that I really liked. So full spoilers, if you are not interested in, in this, go ahead and pop off now. Um, my social media is below. Like and subscribe. I hope to see you next time. And spoilers, three, two, one. A couple things that I do want to spoil about what happened and, and also the severity of this child's mental health il illness. Um, I do want to talk about that a little bit first. We're kind of told in the beginning that, you know, she is a victim of abuse and so we she's going to these therapists and they think she has reactive attachment disorder which is a disorder a lot of children have who were abused and neglected and I loved the portrayal of that because she definitely has clear sociopathic tendencies in the book and you know she kills a cat and ultimately by the end of the book she has killed more than one person 
And I really loved that they had her portrayed this way and the complexities of it because her dad, you know, loves her and doesn't see that part of her. You know, he sees that she's a little bit of a troubled kid, but the adults don't want to believe that these little children or this little child could be capable of real, true harm and danger. And that's one thing I think that people who don't know that mental health illness in children can be so severe, I think that's one thing that they just often don't believe, like, oh, it's not that big a deal, you know, and once you have a child and you kind of see that they have some mental health issues, you wonder, like, at the very least, could your child be capable of that? There are a lot of families with children who have mental health problems. Again, I'm in forums with them because my child has them too who have violent children, who have children that they absolutely sometimes fear for their life with. I don't fear for my life at this time. My daughter's stuff is very well controlled. However, there have been times where I've been worried about, like, you know, we don't have pets, but she does have a guinea pig at grandma's that she sees under supervision, but we don't have pets in the house because I'm not sure that in a moment of curiosity slash bad judgment that we couldn't have some harm to a pet. You know, you just, I think parents generally think that's not ever something that they have to worry about with their child. And when you have a mentally ill child, it, it is. You know, you see a dark side of parenting in this book that is a reality for a lot of parents that have mentally ill children. So I did really like that. Um, when she kills the cat, she's just kind of like wanted to see it die. And I do think that that is, you know, it's meant to be horrific, but it's something I can totally understand. Um, on a much, much smaller scale, we had my daughter uh, rip the wings off a butterfly and killed it. And she did this in front of her sister and some other little girls who, of course, were so upset that she killed this butterfly. And when we sat down and talked to her about it, my daughter was like, well, you didn't tell me not to kill things. My child was like school aged, like I think this was first grade or kindergarten. So we had to sit down and go, okay, it's not okay to kill things. Now, I don't know if that's something you typically do with normal healthy children, but you know, it didn't occur to us beforehand that we should specifically say, don't kill things to our child who has some mental health issues. We did though. My child now knows that it's not okay to kill things. But again, I loved that in this book, the, the child is not portrayed as this sweet little innocent thing. She's portrayed as kind of sociopathic and she is, and that can happen. So I loved the rep for that. I saw a lot of that in, in um, I saw a little little glimpses of our life in the story and again I do want to really really say my child is you know a, like a level one and the child in this book is a level nine or ten so definitely so much distance but little hints of stuff that we've seen and dealt with and I really loved the rep of that. So in the book after the so the mother starts fearing for her life and her child's or her other child's life and that is something that really happens in families where there's mental health problems, especially if their one child is a lot older and the other child is a lot younger. You, there are definitely times when they can present a danger to other kids. And I loved that that was all dealt with. And that's kind of the mom in this book starts to go crazy because she can't get help to deal with the mentally ill child. And she ends up accidentally hurting her child as she, when she has like a psychotic break dealing with this mentally ill child. And let me tell you, I have never been to that level, but I have certainly sought counseling from the stress of parenting a child with mental health issues. So I could totally relate to that, like there but for the grace of God go I, because especially when we didn't have a diagnosis, we weren't yet in therapy, we were still trying to seek out therapy and we were coming up against brick walls as we did it. It was so hard to be like, I don't know how to deal with this and nobody's helping me. And we find out in the book that the birth mother 
had been, had noticed her child needed mental health issues, was trying to get help getting her child mental health issues, and couldn't find help. The child's behavior was getting more out of control, and that's why this child was chained up. That's why this child was being starved as a trying to get her to behave, you know, food, because the mom didn't know what else to do. Now, her biological mom had some other issues going, so, you know, I don't want to make her seem like she was just this poor woman who locked, who tied her kid up and starved her because she just didn't know how to parent her child. But I totally understand the struggle that she went through with getting help because we went through a very similar struggle of getting help. And we went through a similar struggle of nothing was working to solve the behavior problems that were getting worse. You know, at one point my child was painting the walls with feces and nothing we were doing was making that less appealing. She would also, you know, smear it all over her sister and stuff like that. And mind you, she was still little, but, you know, there were, just weren't answers. And we would have, you know, violent outbursts. I would put my child in timeout, and while I'm putting her in timeout, like carrying her to timeout, she's pulling my hair, she's kicking me, she's knocking over furniture. I sit her in timeout, and she gets up and punches me. I mean, that is what it is like to deal with this child of mine who's a lot less sick than the child in this book. And so I could totally understand where the mom came from at the end of the book. Like she's been trying to get help. She's been calling children's services. So she's been calling psychologists. Nobody will help her deal with this out of control child. And she's afraid for her life. And she absolutely should because her child is the one that killed her. Now let's go back to the media stuff that I, or the stuff I was telling you about at the crime scene. So this mom has videos on her phone of explaining what she's doing. If I'm reading the end right, the mom had videos on her phone explaining what she was doing, you know, trying to get help and different things. And and even I believe they have the, her actual murder on video. But the phone was locked and so the cops were like, yeah, we can't violate her Fourth Amendment rights. The, the dead mom. The dead mom. We can't violate her rights by looking in her phone to see if there's anything on her phone that might tell us who murdered her. I feel like that's a huge stretch. I feel like if it's a murder scene and somebody has a cell phone, the police are going to get a warrant and go through the phone and see, you know, is there a boyfriend? Because they don't know. They don't know anything. But it takes years in this book for this murder to get figured out. And this murder, I believe, was on tape or darn close to it. There's a lot of information on the video, and it takes us years to figure all this out because the police couldn't get a warrant for it. So again, that, as I mentioned earlier, may be something that is very realistic, but I thought, geez, you really can't get a warrant for this phone that was at the murder scene. Really? That has videos of this murder taking place and videos prior to that of why this kid's been locked up because the mom can't get help. So anyway, um, I, I didn't love that. I thought that was that part the the police investigation really irritated me because obviously the child goes on to kill not only her cat, but also her aunt, if you've read the whole book. So we have so many things that could have prevented the death of her aunt, who she ultimately murders as well. She murdered her mom, murdered a cat, murdered her aunt. Craziness. But um, I did love at the end that she that the mental illness of this child was not caused by the abuse but the abuse was caused by the mental illness by the mom who just was at the end of her rope and didn't know what else to do about this mentally ill child because i think people don't believe that that thing is that sort of thing is possible i know from being in support groups with other parents that sometimes you just don't know what else to do. There are people who have given their children up to the state because they love their children so much, but they just don't know how to parent them in a safe way, and they've got to protect their other kids. Mental illness in children is heartbreaking, and it's something that needs so much more attention and so much more research and funding and help, and help for parents who are seeking help and that is something that is absolutely lacking in our society. So this book, because of all the personalness, I really loved. And I could very much relate to 
the changes the mom goes through. So in the beginning, they don't have a child. The mom um, had had a miscarriage, had had miscarriages, and they talked about adopting, but they didn't adopt. And this is the one who adopts the little girl, not the bio mom. And so when her husband comes home and says, hey, there's this kid that needs adopted, you know, she's hesitantly open to it. She really wanted a baby, but her husband just loves this child, and so she goes with it. And at first, she's really trying to love this child and parent this child, and she's really putting her heart and soul into it. And then she gets pregnant and has her own baby, her own biological child, the child that she's wanted her entire life. And that's when I think the real shift in the story happens of, she is exhausted of caring for her baby and trying to keep her baby safe from this mentally ill child who she adopted and has never really fully been able to bond with because of the health issues. And and that is a true difficult thing. Um, I love my daughter more than anything in the world, but it is very hard to have a close relationship with a child who has mental health issues. So I totally related to that part. And to her, then, you know, the mother deteriorates until she has a nervous breakdown. And she tries to drown the little girl with the mental health issues, which is not the right answer, by the way. In case anybody wondered, I'm not okay with drowning kids. I could understand it. I could understand it. But, you know, that's not okay. We don't do that. <clears throat> and while she's trying to drown this kid is when the... Um, little boy, her little boy gets his head hit because she was baby wearing, I think. And she, as she's trying to drown the little girl, she moved the wrong way and hit his head on the tub. So that's how the police get involved in this whole story. The second part of it of, you know, they think he's an abused child. They think the girl's an abused child. And so they take the children away, lock the mom in a mental institution thinking she's just gone crazy and thinks that there's this, you know, basically demon inside her child. And then you get the situation of, okay, the aunt is brought in to care for the sister and the little boy and the little girl kills her, her aunt. And, you know, stuff proceeds. But I totally can understand being driven to that point and and I wish the dad had stepped in more. I felt the dad really dropped the ball a lot in this book. Like, his wife keeps saying, no, there's a problem. And he's like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. She's sweet. She's fine. And, you know, she doesn't show that side of herself to the dad like she does the mom. Like, this child is obviously well-bonded with the dad, not the mom. It was such a good, good story of mental illness in the child, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed seeing parts of my life in a book related to and having that out there for people to see. I was a little disappointed with some of the reactions people gave in reviews. Obviously, some people didn't find it very believable. They didn't think kids can really be sick in the way that this kid was. And I, you know, I hope this book opens up a dialogue with four people who have children with mental illness and makes people think twice about the complexities of parenting a child with mental illness. Um, again, we don't kill kids. It's not okay. Don't drown your kid that has mental health issues. I'm not saying that's okay. But I am saying, you know, it's cool that this book opens a dialogue about that and about how difficult it is and mentally taxing on the parents to raise a child that has mental health issues. The end of the book, the mom basically says that she's going to tell her husband that she he has to choose between, you know, his daughter, the daughter, who he just loves. He loves the little girl. She's never going to live with them again. The mom's like, that, that's not going to happen. And I believe the little girl by now, they by the end, they, rem they have put her in an institution. And the problem with institutionalized care is a lot of times the kids don't stay there permanently. I don't know. We've never had an inpatient stay. But from what I hear from other parents, the inpatient stays tend to be short term. So um, they didn't really look in the end of the book like how they're going to solve the problem when she comes back, when she gets out. Because here's the problem. When you have a mentally ill child, a lot of times they're never really cured. You might have stabilized. There might be medicines to make her better. 
but she's never going to really probably be healthy and safe and the the mother's mental health problem is not probably going to be where she can raise her. So you don't really get to see what solution they have. There are absolutely families, in case you don't know this, where our two parents and they live separate because one parent cannot deal with the mental health issues of their child, like safely. I've totally heard of people in the support groups I'm part of where that is a real thing or where they live in two separate houses to protect the younger kids from the older one where you know one parent lives with a mentally health mentally unhealthy child or with the child with mental health issues and the other parent lives with and parents the other children to keep everybody safe so i love just love that that was all brought in there is no real answer at the end you just know that the dad's going to be confronted and basically told she can never come live here again with me and my child, so we got to find an answer. And maybe the answer is giving her back to the state. Maybe it's severing the adoption. And, you know, even in cases where it's a biological parent that has a mentally ill child, sometimes that is something that is done is the child is given up to the state because in some cases the state has the ability money-wise to care for a child. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of discussion on that sometimes in the groups that I'm part of, of, you know, parents saying, I don't know what else to do. Our insurance isn't covering this stuff. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources and we have other kids to take care of too. And this child is a danger to themselves and others. And, you know, they are getting CPS called on them and being investigated for abuse, not because of anything they've done, but because of stuff that the child has said or done. Sometimes mentally ill children harm themselves. It is just a really rough journey to have a mentally ill child. And I love that that was explored so well in this. <clears throat> so I understand why the author didn't have an answer at the end of what they were going to do. And at the end, you're kind of the kids in an institution. The mom says the kid's never coming back here. She's too much of a danger to, to myself and my baby. And the dad now knows that the child is mentally ill because they've learned that she killed her biological mom, she killed the cat, and she killed her aunt. And of course, she's now, they're now pariahs in the family because they killed the aunt, so the uncle's not speaking to them, the kids aren't speaking to them, the grandma's upset. You know, it, it was a real mess when they left it, so it's not neatly tied up, but I felt like it almost couldn't be. And I, I just, I thought it brought a lot of really interesting thoughts and discussions into the story. So, um, I have gone on way too long about this book. I, I definitely recommend reading it. It was really good and I loved how thought-provoking it was. Um, I do think more people should read it, at the very least, to have more understanding about the complexity of childhood mental illness. And the book is written by a counselor or a psychologist or somebody, so it, it is a very accurate portrayal in a lot of ways of mental health and in children. Um, again, social media is below. Please like and subscribe. If you've read the book, tell me what you think. If you have a child with mental health illness, did you feel like it was a pretty good representation of the things that you struggle with? Um, go ahead and leave any comments you'd like below. All right, guys, this is Jane. Talk to you later. Bye.